Building this little chest has been a lot of fun. I've learned a lot of lessons doing it. I haven't quite finished up the construction of it yet, but I've gotten it far enough along where I can work on it. The things I haven't accomplished yet is I haven't gotten the skirts, the wraparound skirts placed on the chest yet, or the wraparound for the lid, uh, or a lock installed or anything like that. I've gotten the basic hinge hardware and the chain, and I've gotten the chest to a usable point. Uh, throughout the winter here, I'm going to take a little break here in the shop and uh, empty it out and finish up the skirts and get this thing finished up. Uh, but for right now, I'm just happy to have a workable chest that I can work out of here in my house, keep all my tools stored inside of it uh, so everything's cleaned up and looks pretty nice even when uh, people want to come over and, uh, and visit. What do you say we take a look inside? You'll excuse the handheld camera work, but this is the best way I can figure to actually get a good look inside the chest. Starting on the top till on this side, I have my measuring instruments and then my marking stuff. Moving over here, I have my dividers, card file, and a brush, marking gauges, angle gauge. A small brass mallet for adjusting planes, a combination square, an angle guide. I also have a scissors and my razor blade handle, some extra razor blades over here, and a nice old wooden spool with some string. Really good for uh, doing markups and things like that. Working my way down to the next till down, I have a selection of screwdrivers from the second one down and some pliers and things like that, including my nail nippers on this side. I have my draw bore pins here, spoke shaves collected over here, and this little wrap here I have a selection and assortment of a couple of little wood rafts and files. Card scrapers here, my eclipse guide, and a small oil stone and some oil. And on the front here, or on this end here, I mean, I have uh, my chisels. And along the front edge, I have my slick. I like this thing. Well, one thing I did forget on the top till, pardon me jumping around a little bit, I also have a walnut piece of uh, stock that I use as a plane stop, and I have a couple of uh, aluminum L brackets for winding sticks. A little bit of painter's tape on the one stick. Down on the bottom of my chest, bottom till I mean, on this end I have my little carved box that I keep my uh, auger and my uh, brace bits in. I have some extra drill bits here, traditional more regular drill bits like we see nowadays. I have a box with a number of uh, a variety of uh, fastener ends, Phillips, Torx, Robertson's, some gimlets in the bottom. I have my four mallets that I use, my wooden bench mallet, my 16 ounce nailing mallet, and there of course is my Miller Falls uh, egg beater drill. I have a smaller tack hammer and my chisel and carving mallet that I use. In this little pack here I have wrapped up all my carving chisels and I also have my hand sanding block. On this end I have my Stanley 71, a block plane, and a little bit of a, a little uh, thumb plane I guess I end up calling it most of the time. Well. Let's back off and we're going to um, pull these uh, drawers out, pull these trays out, and get a look at the bottom of the box. So here we are, kind of taking a look down along the bottom side of the box of the uh, tool chest. You can see in the back corner, there's my uh, layout square and the carpenter's square. 
I also have my smaller layout square up here in the front. They're both being held up against the wall by that larger wooden joiner plane. I also have in here my bench planes, a wooden shoulder plane. This is a small molding plane, a uh, wooden scrub and a wooden smoother, and a rabbit plane and a uh, plow plane that I actually have no blades for. So it hasn't been, it isn't really working. Uh, as soon as I get some blades working, that would be awesome to be able to use that. Up along the front wall, I've put a couple nails in, and there I've hung a couple braces and a draw knife. Along the far wall, I've put in a little side till, a little different than the traditional tool chest. That side till holds uh, a couple of tiles that I use for my uh, sharpening system. And I also throw my glues and there's a pack of sandpaper and uh, some paint and blue painters tape, of course, and a can of, of uh, adhesive spray. I'm going to move along the front. I've got my Bad Axe Tool Works dovetail and car uh, carcass crosscut saw in the front tool tail. I've got a um, flexible flat cutting saw and a gent saw that I use for some fine work sometimes. I have a couple of uh, tri squares here and in the front corner. Again, please forgive the handheld work here. I have a couple of gouges. Some of my wooden rasp, larger wooden rasps, a metal rasp, and a steel for sharpening my, uh, excuse me, sharpening my uh, card scrapers. In the saw till itself, I have five saws right now. These probably aren't the five saws that are going to end up living in here in the end, but they're what I have right now. Um, stuffed along the one side here, I have my coping saw. I also have my antique stair saw, dado saw, and the dado saw that I made. Uh, the reason I have them both in here is, well, the antique one I haven't had a chance to rehab and clean the rust off and sharpen up yet. And uh, once I do, you know, maybe I'll sell or give away my uh, the one that I made. Oh, well, we'll see which one works better. Uh, why don't you give me a second to pull the saws out of here, and we'll see what's underneath those. So, underneath your saws is a great place to hide extra storing, uh, to ha hide extra storage for stuff that you use once in a great, great while. In the far back here, I have a couple of wooden tap sets. The dies are in this canvas little wrap. In the center area, I have a C-clamp for use with my uh, Craig pocket hole jig. My saw set and my saw joiner. I have a ball peen hammer down here. We're a set of micro files inside inside this wrap is uh, some other larger files and my saw files. Inside this wrap is my some more metal working uh, punches and a cold chisel and things like that. Underneath that, I have a hacksaw and uh, actually some pieces for a turning saw that uh, I'm planning on building yet this uh, oops I uh, plan on building yet this uh, winter. You can see one of the things I did add is I added arches underneath the saw tail. This allows some of these longer items like my uh, some of my saw files there to stretch all the way underneath the tills leaves that area open. Now if we move up over into the far end. I have my Craig pocket hole jig I keep in here. 
There's my saw vise and a plug-in for uh, this little magnifying lamp that I just took out here. I also have my blocks that I help me when I'm sharpening my saws. Uh, this magnifying lamp is also something I like to use when I'm sharpening my saws. It's kind of tough to hold the camera one-handed and, and, and work some things here. But you can see it's just a little magnifying lens with a light on the back. It helps clip to my workbench, and that's what I use. So, thanks for stopping by the winter shop and uh, helping me tear apart my tool chest so that I can show you all the little nooks and crannies inside of it. It's going to take me a little bit to get it put back together now, but you know what? It's all worth it. Um, I'm Derek Olson. This is the Old Wolf Workshop Studio. Uh, once again, saying thanks for watching, um, and we'll see you around. And she got up like, get over here. Thank you. Thank you. Ready? All right. Four, three. Today on the Old Wolf Workshop. Four, three. Today on the Old Work Work. Four, three. Today on the Old Wolf Workshop.